I'm going to talk about our experience with one specific Voyager API, which is uh, the BatchCat API, which I believe I'm right in thinking is the oldest of the Voyager APIs. Is that right? Um, some background. Um, I work for the many libraries of the University of Cambridge, well over 100. Um, one of them is pictured here. Um, it likes to think of itself as the main one, but then again, all of them do. Um, in some ways, Cambridge acts like a microcosm of the library world in general. And the problems we face internally are interesting um, in the wider sphere, particularly in light of developments like the URM. Um, what are these problems? I'm sure they'll be familiar to you all. Um, quality in terms of fullness of data. Many of our records are so short it's impossible to uniquely identify the item they are describing by usual means. Quality in terms of mark coding, either through errors or through legacy data. And duplication, which is to say duplicate bibliographic records often of varying fullness and coding accuracy for the same title. And I don't need to go through the effects of these data problems. Um, particularly dangerous is things like patchy retrieval, where a search re retrieves some records for an item, but not all of them. So people assume they're getting everything. Um, it's worth emphasizing that bad data doesn't just cause problems with the systems and tools we're using at present. Um, it also ties us into those system and tools. Many of the new interfaces, APIs, etc., and certainly new data models rely on good data to be effective or workable. Um, I recently saw a presentation on RDA, which is the um, underlying thing under FERBA, by somebody who said the main thing they notice when people try to implement FERBA is how much it highlights their existing data problems. And it's really been a thing where things like that, where you think it's going to solve your data problems or somehow smooth them over, it actually suddenly brings them into relief. Really, um, I think a similar thing can be said for the new discovery tools like Prima. Um, essentially, short records don't deduplicate. They don't appear in fasted searches. They don't appear in word clouds. They disappear from the more sophisticated search interfaces. So. Um, with so many libraries, and blessed as we are with eight separate Voyager databases, in attempting to tackle these data problems, we're essentially doing um, what we hope the URM <laughs> will be doing on a wider scale in the future, which is taking a load of records, doing some bibliographic processing, otherwise known as cataloging, and coming up with one beautifully formed bibliographic record. So on the large and the local scale, um, we in Ex Libris have similar aims, better records and fewer records. Um, we feel that not just for short term, uh, for the short term benefits to our institution, but also on the wider scale when we think about our data model, it's imperative that every library gets its house in order with regard to its own data before any move to a model of record sharing data across libraries becomes feasible. I'm not sure if people agree with that as a general principle. Um, so if we imagine this is the URM funnel in the future, obviously a speculative funnel. I mean, nobody knows when it's going to arrive. Um, every record going into the funnel will be the product of a similar funneling process in one of our libraries, which is a lot of funnels. Though they, do, they look like paper cups for some reason on that. But they are funnels, I can guarantee it. So we've got a lot of funnels to build. All right. How do we go about building these funnels? Uh, traditional cataloging certainly has a role to play in sorting out our data. Um, for the moment, at least, automated tools can't do everything. But they can do an enormous amount. Um, in any case, for most institutions, time and money will simply not allow for manual recataloging projects on a scale large enough to have any significant effect on their data problems. Um, in Cambridge, we did some quick calculations and worked out that sorting out our short records alone of which there are a million, would take well over 100 years of cataloging time, short records and, and duplication of short records, which is a lot of money. Um, there are a number of stages in creating using automated cataloging tools, so the solution being automated cataloging tools. Identifying data problems is usually done by throwing SQL at a database using something like Perl DBI. So that's okay. 
I'm sure there are other tools for throwing SQL at Voyager databases. Um, resolving the data problems within the records themselves can be accomplished fairly easily using SQL to retrieve the marked records, tools like the Perl mark modules to mess around with them essentially. So that's okay. Problems come when we come to writing the results back to the database. Um, we have tool, two tools for doing this, Batchcat, PBulk Import, and this is where we run into problems. Batchcat is the more versatile of the two, but cannot, as far as I know, and if anybody knows different, please tell me, um, be used on a server. In any, any case, compared to the clients, it has limited functionality in imported, important areas. PBulk Import can be used on the server. You can build um, a variety of applications based on it, but it has limited functionality and relies on a certain amount of setup in sysadmin, so you can't fu fully automate processes using PBulk Import. Okay, given these tools, what can we do? Um, I haven't in included any code in the presentation because of uh, time limits, but if anyone's interested in how we did any of these things, please ask me and, I and I'll send them the appropriate code or put it on our comments. Okay, we can use any existing full records to enrich short records. This is one of the things we've done to go from something like this to something like this. We've uh, managed to enrich 120,000 of our 1 million short records using this process in an automated way. So all you do is identify, you use um, SQL to identify a full record for a short record, pull out the full record, put it on top of the short record. So that's something we can do. Um, we can correct records, identify problems with records and correct them. Uh, hang on a minute. Um, going from something like this to something like this, not easy to see the differences, but there's a list of the corrections. So we can correct mark records. So anything really that involves putting data back in the same structure as it came out, we can do. We can overlay records, we can correct them. Where we run into problems is in relinking records. If you'll bear with me and imagine that the blue circles are bibliographic records, the yellow circles are holding records, and the green boxes are purchase orders. Okay, identifying a group of records is okay. SQL, um, write an algorithm to identify duplicates. Identifying the best record, that's okay. Writing a scoring algorithm on the mark record, pull it out, that's feasible. It's difficult, but it's, uh, well, I wouldn't say difficult. It's time consuming, but it's feasible. Um, unfortunately, we can't relink the records. Uh, because we can't relink the records, we can't delete the duplicate records. And no relinking means no deduplication for most Voyager libraries. Okay, which means our funnel turns into a tube, <laughs> and the idea, the idea of sharing metadata between libraries recedes into the distance. So it not only has a, a short-term local effect, it's also got a fairly significant long-term wider effect for the library world, as it were. Okay, um, there's two, two fairly simple well, I'm not sure how simple they are to implement. They're quite simple to say um, ways to remedy this. Um, the first is to put Batchcat on the server. Um, bulk import tries its hardest, but it's not really designed for this kind of job. You end up with millions and millions of log files as well. Um, not having a server version of Batchcat means we can't build web interfaces to it, which means we can't distribute automated cataloging tools other than by client, by Gary's tools. Um, in most, most institutions, this might not be a problem, but certainly in an institution like Cambridge, with the amount of libraries and librarians we have, it is a problem. And finally, the second and more important change is to filter more of the client functionality through to Batchcat or an API like it, um, particularly the relinking of items, holdings, and purchase orders, which means that suddenly everything's possible again. Um, in summary, the problem of bad data is not going to go away, nor in mo most institutions is it likely to be solved by traditional cataloging. And if we have the right tools, we can contemplate moves to totally new data models, as well as taking full advantage of new 